Ibn Abbas radiyallahu an, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that there are three commandments that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each of these commandments came with pez. He said the first of them is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَطِيءُ اللَّهِ وَأَطِيءُ الرَّسُولِ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. They came in pairs. He then said the second commandment is the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةِ Establish the prayer and give the zakah. And then he said the third one is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا that I command you, or it's a decree upon you all, to worship none but Allah, and to be dutiful to your parents. So these are the three commandments that have come with pez. And today insha'Allah ta'ala will talk about the final commandment. The right that the parents have upon the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should know, O oh brothers and sisters in Islam, that one of the greatest acts that a person can do after granting Allah his right of Tawheed is to be dutiful towards your parents. And one of the greatest sins that a person can do after committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being undutiful towards his parents. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. ثَلَاثَةٌ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْجَنَّةِ there are three types of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Jannah haram for them. He said, al liwalidei, The one who is undutiful towards his parents. He said, al mudminul khamar, The one who makes himself completely addicted to alcohol or all types of drugs. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the youth, The one who has no Ghira, no protective jealousy for his family members. For example, if he sees his wife or he sees his sisters or he sees his daughters commit acts of haram with the opposite gender, he has or he finds no form of protective jealousy in his heart. Haram Allahu alayhi wa jannah. That Allah has made jannah completely haram for him. He also said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Thalathatun, la yanzur Allahu ilayhim fi yawm al-qiyamah, wa la yuzakkihim, there are three types of people once more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not look at him on Yawm al-Qiyamah. What does that mean? What does it mean for Allah not to look at the slave of Allah? Imagine yourself standing on Yawm al-Qiyamah and you want, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Afu, Al-Ghafoor. All of these characteristics of Rahmah, of mercy. So you're calling upon him. You know that he sees you. But he doesn't look at you. You know that he sees you. You know that he knows your hajjah. You know that he knows your situation. Better than anyone else. But he doesn't even look at you. This is, the even, this is a greater punishment than the one who looks at a person and says no. Because you know he sees. You know he knows where you are. But he doesn't even look at you. لا ينظر الله إليهم يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم Allah would not forgive him. Allah will leave him how he is. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And he will have a great, great, severe punishment. And who is this person? الْآقْ لِوَالِدَيْ The one who is undutiful towards his parents. We find, and it's a great shame, that the Muslims of today, myself included, and us all, we no longer show our parents the respect that they deserve. The respect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them. Allah says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ What does uf mean? The scholars of tafsir, they say uf comes from the word af or taf. And it is the word that is used to describe the smallest amount of dirt that can possibly exist. So the scholars then, they say that the smallest amount of dirt is the dirt that is found under trimmed nails. Even nails are trimmed. You don't have, you don't, it doesn't contain any dirt. But it's the smallest amount of dirt that they knew of. So Allah is saying, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Don't even give them this small amount of dirt. 
Don't even give them the smallest atom's weight of disobedience. The one who does so falls under the category of the one who has been undutiful towards his parents. Again, it's a great shame. It's a great shame that we are living today, especially in the West, taking from their customs and their traditions, whereby the majority of the Muslims, the majority of the youth, they cannot start a conversation with their parents. They've never even said Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah to them. How many of us, without raising your hands, but how many of us shake our parents' hands? How many of us kiss them? How many of us have told them that we love them? How many of us have told them of us the forgiveness for the times that we were undutiful towards them? Ya yeah, brothers and sisters in Islam, don't make it so that the day that you wash your parents is the day that you say sorry to them. Don't make it so that the day you lower your fathers and your mothers to their graves is the day that you kiss them. Start today. For Ramadan, Ramadan is a month where when the shayateen are chained and locked up. Jannah is open. Jahannam is closed. If you, want to, if you want to find an opportunity, the greatest opportunity to go back to your parents and start your relationship with them, this is the time. Alam amanu and takhsha aqulubuhum li thikrillah. When will the hearts who remember Allah finally be affected of Allah's reminder? How many times have you heard these stories? How many times have you heard about the rights of the parents? But when will that time come, Allah says? When will that time come for those people who remember Allah for their hearts to be affected with the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, a close friend of mine, he lost his father last year. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And he said to me in a message, he said to me, he said to me, respect your father and grant him his right for this door of Jannah will remain open for you until your parents close, until your parents pass away. You know how Allah has given us Jannah and it's open for us now? For each of our parents, our fathers and our mothers, two doors of Jannah are open. The day they pass away, these doors are closed. Ibn Umar radiallahu an, he saw a person and he said to him, Shall I tell you an easy way to enter Jannah? He said, yes, tell me. He said, <coughs> speak good to your parents. Provide them with food. And whatever you have from the kabair, whatever you have from the major sins, it doesn't matter, you will enter Jannah. Speak good to your parents and give them some food. Whatever you have from the kabair, it doesn't matter, you will enter Jannah. I conclude insha'Allah ta'ala by reminding us about a principle that I mentioned in the talk the day before yesterday. With the scholars of Islam, they used to say that the reward for an action is from the same action. Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father, Ada, was someone who was a kafir, a non-Muslim. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, he used to respect him with the utmost respect. Whenever he would call him to Tawheed, he would say, Ya Abati, la ta'bud shaytan O oh my beloved father, O oh my beloved father, don't worship the shaytan. Calling his father the most beautiful and most respectable names, Ya Abati, he would say. Even though his, ka- his father was a mushrik or a kafir. A number of years later, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim to slaughter his son Ismail alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he hesitated a little bit. So his son to him, his son, he turned towards his father. And what did he say? Ya abati, if'al ma tu'mar. Oh my beloved father, the same word, the same word that his father used to his father. The point is that however we treat our parents, this is exactly how our children will treat us. Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that there was once a father who was old in his age and he had two children. These two children, as he became old, they said to him, Oh father, allow us to take you to Hajj. So the father became extremely pleased. He goes, Hajj, I've never made Hajj. They said, we'll pray, cover all your costs. We'll travel with you, taking you to Hajj. So he became extremely pleased. He packed his bags and they went walking towards Hajj. They then diverted their route, walking towards a different direction. So his father said to the children, 
Oh my children, where are you taking me? The Hajj, it's easier for us to travel and take that route. The children, they said to him, Oh father, today is the day we're going to rid ourselves from you. We have brought you here not to take you to Hajj, but we have brought you here to kill you and leave you in the desert. The father said to them, Oh my sons, don't kill me here. Keep walking. And as you walk another short distance, you'll find the tree. Kill me next to that tree. His son said to him, Oh my father, what's, what difference is it? You die here or you die there? It's the same thing. His father said, Kill me over there. Because that is where I killed my father. Kill me over there. Because that is where I killed my father. Our brothers and sisters in Islam, know that our children will treat us exactly the way we treat our parents. For those of us who have been blessed with a father, who has been blessed with a mother, know that these two doors of Jannah are open for you. The moment, the moment they pass away, these doors of Jannah are closed. The moment we are, due, we are undutiful towards our parents, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send us a, a strict and a severe adab. لا ينظر الله إليهم يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to make us of those who are dutiful towards our parents. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to make us of those who these doors of Jannah are kept open for us as long as possible. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to allow us to be patient, to allow us to restrain our tongues, to restrain our hands, and to make us of those who grant our parents the rights that they deserve. جزاكم الله خيرا.